let's learn to convert the gas constant R into, di into different values of R. So we now we can derive R from PV is equal to nRT, that is my ideal gas equation. Rearranging the equation, what you get is P into V by N into T. Bring the values for P, we know that pressure is our 1 atm and volume is 22.4 liters. So, and if it is 1 mole and the temperature is 273 Kelvin, then what we get the value for R is 0 0.08206 atm liter and per mole and per kelvin right this is what we get how do we get these numbers we know that from Avogadro's law if the gas is kept at the same temperature and pressure and it's got the same volume it will contain the same number of molecules now if we take uh, the number of molecules as one mole and the temperature and pressure is 1 atm and 273 kelvin so the volume will be 22.4 liters for any ideal gas okay and this is my one value for r how can we make changes now in one of my videos i've told that it's very easy to make convert one unit into into another like suppose say i've got 0.5 nanometers over here I want to convert that into meters what I'm going to do is that 0.5 into uh, now this is my one nanometer and before that I get some number irrespective of the number I've got before that before the unit you know I'll just put one nanometer in the desired unit and that is I know that one nanometer is 10 to the power minus 9 meter so what I get is 5 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters okay so in the same way over here I've got one liter, sorry, one AT and one liter, one mole and one Kelvin. So suppose that in any numerical problem you're solving and and the pressure is given in tor. So you don't have to actually remember the the other unit for R. What you need to remember is this only th uh, this value of R and do the desired changes. So uh, ATM can be converted by just writing 760 to and the liter will be the same over there and this is my per mole and per Kelvin so suppose say this is my first value and my second value could be 0 0.08206 okay I want to convert that into liters keeping ATM and other things same so I'll write ATM and for one liter I know that if I want to convert liter into meter cube I know that one liter is equal to one by ten to the power three meter cubed so one liter one by ten to the power three meter cubed per mole per Kelvin in this case if you multiply these numbers you'll get your answer in this case you'll multiply these two numbers you'll get the desired value for R now uh, if I want to convert that ATM into kilopascal if the pressure is in Pascal then 0 0.08206 into my ATM pressure is uh, in Pascal now so I'll write 101.3 kilopascal okay every time you need to put the equivalent numerical value for a unit. One ATM cannot be one kilopascal. One ATM is one oh one point three kilopascal. If you don't write as one oh one point three kilopascal you won't get the desired change. Okay. So in th as in this case we cannot say 0.5 nanometer is 0.5 into into just meters and become 0.5 nanometers is 0.5 meter then. So you know that don't you? Now kilopascal and then pressure then this is my liter and this is my per mole and per kelvin okay now this is my second value for r this is my third value for r you can make any value for r according to your needs suppose that i want kilopascal and meter cubed i can put both over here kilopascal and meter cubed and get the desired change in r now uh, one value for R is in joules and we know that it is 8.314 
joules per mole per Kelvin. Now this one is a bit of a task. How to convert uh, ATM liters into joules. Now you can take a look over here. Let me just show it to you. This is my per mole per Kelvin over here. I've got my same per mole per Kelvin over here. But what we see is that we get a unit of joule instead of this ATM and liters. So how can we link ATM and liter with joules? Okay. So or or we can say that ATM and liters are joule. Okay. So let's do it. Uh, first we need to understand what a joule is. Then we'll understand how to do it. Okay. So my one joule. My one joule. is equal to a body of mass 2 kg if it is uh, having a speed of 1 meter per second 1 meter per second a velocity of 1 meter per second then it will have a kinetic energy of 1 joule and so let's write it the kinetic energy is half mv squared and we will write half into mass that is my 2 kg a mass of 2 kg having a velocity of 1 meter per second so squaring it will give you 1 meter squared per second per second squared so we'll write over here cancelling the twos out what we get is 1 kg meter squared per second squared right now let's do it over here also point zero eight two oh six into one oh one point three kilo means one thousand pascal can be written as newton per meter square and liter will be converted into one by ten to the power three meter cube since we have got meter squared over here so we need to convert liter also in meter cubed okay so we we'll, and the rest of the units will remain the same per mole per Kelvin now writing now here we can see that we have got Newton over here what we are looking for this value that is my one joule this is my one joule is equal to one kg one 1 kg meter squared per second squared. We don't have this thing over here. We need to find it from these units over here. Now, Newton is the unit for force, and we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, when a mass of 1 kg having an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared will have a force of 1 Newton, and we get 1 kg meter per second squared is my one newton so one newton is this thing okay so point zero eight two zero six into one o one point three and I've got my kilo over here and for newton I will write uh, this is my one newton instead of that I'll write kg meter per second squared and I've got 1 by 10 to the power 3 make it meter squared and bring 1 meter over here okay and then I've got my per mole and per Kelvin so and bring this thing I left out this thing meter squared over here cancelling these things out kilos and 10 to the power 3 out so we get kg meter squared per second squared and that we can write as 1 joule so what we get is 0 0.08206 into 101.3 and this thing is 1 joule so I'll write just joules over here and per mole per Kelvin so if you multiply these two values you will get 8.314 joules per mole 
per Kelvin. So what I'm suggesting you is that you need not uh, try to derive these things or convert the uh, units into uh, the other units, especially the joules. You know why? The reason is that the process is quite clumsy and uh, it will take a lot of time to do it. Uh, but for the rest of the units, you can take a look over here. From the rest of the units, you don't have to memorize all the numerical values for R. What you need to remember is this. And from this numerical value, we can reach to any other numerical value with ease, okay, except in this case. Now, once you know that 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin is the value for R, then if the question is asked in calories, you can again do a subtle change in it and we know that 1 joule is 1 by 4.18 calories per mole per Kelvin and if you multiply these two numbers you will get the desired value for R. Thanks for watching the video.